<laughs> so everybody, next up we have Paul Lang, who is part of the comms team, who's going to speak to us today about the use of social media and how we can use it to spread the word. So I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Paul. Let's get started. Uh, a few of you know me, a few, a few people here know me. I'm the communications officer for NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and I'm delighted to be included in today's Spread the Word session. This has been something I've been looking forward to for a little while, just to talk a wee bit about, well, a wee bit I could talk all day about social media, but I have I have kind of reined this into a relatively short presentation, focusing on, focusing on how we identify what impresses people on social media, how we identify what makes good content, and also I think it's quite important, and I will stress this during the during the presentation, what social media channels you should use to create content because not every social media channel is the same and it takes some can take a bit longer to get used to. Uh, so I'm just going to, are you okay for me just to open my presentation just now? That's a nice picture of me. As a few of you know, I'm a communications officer covering the whole of NHS. I'm just going to go on now. So this presentation is just called Telling a Story in Social Media. You can do it because it's actually not. Once you get a hand of how to tell a story in social media, you can do it. It's quite easy and you just need to know your audience. You need to know the right social media channel to use. And you need to know what makes a good story. If you don't know me, I'm the communications officer at NHS UGC. Much of what we do when it comes to creating content actually comes from content that is shared with us with permission of the sharers as opposed to content that we necessarily conjure. It's content that we've identified that people will be interested in. And let, let's say this will include, this will include like NHS UGC have not necessarily been on social media for as long as you might think we have. We've only been on Facebook since 2016. And as you could guess, Facebook is our most followed channel. Uh, we use social media to raise awareness of what we do, the good news stories such as positive life destinations, positive life choices, the not so good stories such as having to restrict visitors, but the essential stories such as having to restrict visitors to certain wards. We need to get them all out there so everybody knows. Uh, basically, every time, this is one thing I think is very important to stress is that when we tell a, so a story on social media, we do not just use text. We use a nice picture. We use a good video. The video doesn't need to be professionally shot in the pic nearly does the picture, but it just it needs to look good. It needs to look original. And that is one of our main rules when it comes to when we create all content we create, when we share it or it's created by ourselves. I should also just say that our main from experience when I've been discussing with the allied health professionals prior to this presentation. We discussed the main social media channels, which, as you can imagine, would be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and LinkedIn. I would actually personally recommend for a lot of allied health professional related stories that we use Twitter to create content. The reason is, that, let's say, A, who's a dietitian. I'll, let's say NHS UGC will retweet something for Dietitians Week, and I know I've mentioned this a few times to the team here, so they'll be sick of me talking about Dietitians Week. But it was my first really experience of allied health working for the allied health professional team. A, who is a dietitian working for NHS UGC, will retweet that. B, who also works for NHS UGC as a dietitian, will also retweet it. C, who is a dietitian not working at NHS UGC, will retweet that. And D, who is neither, but is interested in diet in diet will retweet that and I think that Twitter when I'm on Twitter we see for instance Shane Grant the the the, the head of NHS you see is often on Twitter my boss Sandra Bastillo is also on Twitter Twitter is a more of an engaged audience of medical professionals who are more likely to retweet medical related and health related news than you might necessarily get on Twitter and you might not necessarily get on Facebook. So if you were to start creating content, I'd start with Twitter. Just to brief that, it's still a little out of date now because this was created last month, but as you can imagine, Facebook is our most visited 
as our most followed social media channel alongside Twitter, Insta LinkedIn and Instagram. LinkedIn's actually our news channel. We've been on LinkedIn for about three years. We only started practically using it in March and we've already had over nearly 17,000 followers. So that's, that's an example of a successful of, of us being of successful on social media. LinkedIn is quite specific, so I've not focused on LinkedIn as much in this presentation as LinkedIn, I'd say, uh, but you can make content work, you make content work on LinkedIn like by using press, press articles to show positive life changes and positive life destinations. I appreciate that might not be the terminology you use, it's just the terminology I've historically used in the work that I do. As we said, most of the content we is, is shared content, again, with the consent of those participating. Yes, consent, ask to make sure they're happy with it. Uh, the, we simply just ask folk if, if they're happy for sharing or sharing the stories of us. But under, sometimes you may wish to have a permission form or uh, so in case, just in case, obviously you can remove on request as well. When it, uh, we identify what people like by using analytics and the next slide I'll talk about analytics very briefly because analytics are an important way of engaging of engaging engagement and I'm well aware these two words are quite similar and a bit of a tongue twister. Analytics sounds like a big word but it's actually not that hard to understand what it is. We focus on two analytics for NHS GGC which have impressions which are the total number of users who see the content we create. That would mean though if there's 10 of us in this meeting and we all saw a, a post 10 times that would class as 100 impressions. So it's maybe not the most, the best figure to use. I prefer to use engagements because engagements are the total number of users who have clicked, commented on, retweeted, basically interacted with it. Let's say 10,000 people have seen a post, but only five people have reacted. That's not so good. 5,000 people have seen a post and 200 people have reacted. That's much better. It's more people will see that, more people are clearly interested in. And that's why I use engagements to engage, yeah, to assuage what is a good social media, good social media content. Here's an example of particularly good content we've done at NHS GGC. It was during Pride Month. It was Lindsay and Lisa, who are long, long time nurses in, in mental health care, marrying. This was also, it was also topical during Pride Month because I don't doubt we've all seen a lot of organisations will have rainbow colours, rainbow colours in the uh, profile picture, but not necessarily show exactly why they are inclusive organisations, why they are changing lives. This this picture very much does show that we are inclusive employers. We are we are trans it's the perfect social media post for us on social media, and it's three hundred eighty six likes, and. I didn't see too much more. This is a good example of a post you want to uh, of a good post that works. This what this was on all of our, this was on all of our main channels, excluding LinkedIn, and I had an exceptional rate of engagement and impressions. People retweeted, liked, commented. This was a good social media post. When we talk about video, uh, this was from the when we finished when we wrapped up the SEC, SEC Hydro as our vaccination venue. 86,000 people, this video reached 86,000 people. Reach is a slightly different term compared to impressions. That's the, as I said, for impressions, if 10 people see one post 10 times, that makes 100 impressions. Reach is literally one, one, pair, one pair view. 86,000 people saw this. 3,900 people retweeted it. I mean, shared it. Retention drive, which is a wee figure, it shows how many people continue to watch the video, because obviously videos play for a few seconds and then people may move on, but people continue to watch the video a little bit longer. So this was an example, if you wish to watch the video, I'd be happy to share this presentation with everyone as well at the end. It was uh, one of, and this was also something that we created on the fly a little bit. We, one of our press team was at the Hydro and was shortly before was made aware there was going to be a piper. They, this was not something we planned. This 
it was it was an instinctive post and it had exceptional social media growth so it's not simply a case of you need to plan for good content if a post works it works and you can tell it's going sometimes you can tell it will work if, if it looks right i remember talking to the allied health professional team about this as well this was an example of a shared post i will admit i wasn't sure it would work the social media it was scott Cavey who was one of the candidates in the Inverclyde health awards Privately, I was a little unsure. He contacted me and I was a little unsure it would necessarily, as there were lots of candidates, it might come across as I was focusing on one candidate over others. I was wrong to make that judgment about myself when I posted this. It has had 200 likes. It has been commented on. It has 1,500 people clicked that story. So don't, if Sometimes don't you don't necessarily need to, what you would personally click on as a good story. What may be a good story may be a, might not look like a story you'd necessarily be interested in would interest those who follow you. I hope I've made sense of what I say there. And I also would imagine the Greenwich Telegraph would have been quite happy to have 1,500 people clicking on a link. So that's clearly an example of shared content which works well which is pure shared content this, this content would not have came to a would have came into my radar had i not even been contacted so it's important that you keep an eye on you get feedback from people about about services about about campaigns to create such content when it comes to allied health professionals uh, and, uh, two examples of strong content this was from on the left, we've got from Allied Health Professional Day in 2018, which features just, it's just a wee piece on, on, on social media, but it tells, it raises awareness of Allied Health Professional Day, Allied Health Professionals, the different fields, because we've shown us occupational therapists is obviously fairly well known, branch of Allied Health profession, the Allied Health profession, but of, she, we'd, we'd covered, I think it was eight profiles that day. And it also raised awareness how you could get into into the sector. On the right, we have a story. It was this was Dietitians Week again. Forgive me, I know I mentioned this a few times, but this was an example of this was probably the first time I'd really worked with the AHP team. This was Ethel. If anyone who remembers the story, Ethel has been on home parental nutrition for fifty years, which I have been advised was almost unheard of but she still continues to live a fulfilling life. When we covered Dietitians Week, I mostly focused on Dietitians Week across Twitter, but I thought the story was so strong. This would have an interest in beyond Twitter. This was shared on Facebook and Instagram as well, and it did particularly well. So sometimes some content might, this is because I was conscious, this was content which was not just relevant to dietitians. It was a strong example of excellent care provided to those uh, to, to, to residents, a resident of NHS UGC, and it, it worked very well on all social media channels. Sometimes content, this is an example of content which was a very powerful story. It was a young, young boy who sadly passed away at the Princess Royal Mediarty. Unfortunately, the picture of company wasn't the best. We all know the Princess Royal Maternity is an excellent site, but we have used that picture so many times before that you may have, users may have simply flipped through, saw this picture and not really read the actual story. For what it's worth, the story still did quite, still did pretty well. What I hate to call, I hate to call it story considering the nature of the nature of the the nature of the story. Instead, we could have posted. This was also shortly. Before, I was relatively new to the organisation, so I did not. I did not personally create a story. Uh, we may instead have wished to have perhaps have got received consent from the family to maybe had a picture of a bear of a love heart to accompany the story, the tragic story, which may have made more of an impact and may have appeared more, which may have been a better example of, a, of telling a story. 
you also must be careful when you tell stories that you fully engage the, the services you're working with. I'm aware, and for instance, this for example, when we got something wrong, in May we were covering borderline personality disorder month week. We worked with those living with the condition, we worked with the mental health service, but we did not explicitly say that in our, in our posts. And it led to criticism regarding the politics of the care. And we did respond well to this and we removed two future posts, we, we had two scheduled posts regarding self care, which we, we had, which which we worried, which we worried may not have been appropriate in line of negative feedback. Again, the feedback was related to self care, which led to criticism regarding the politics of the care, uh, particularly during the ongoing pandemic. I actually did curiously note that most of this criticism came in Twitter. This also this campaign also featured in Facebook. Perhaps the audience were a little bit more engaged with the healthcare with the, the healthcare on Twitter than maybe the Facebook audience were. I'll wrap us up fairly quickly. We don't worry, we're almost finished. I hope I hope I've made sense. I'm aware with allied health professionals that there might be a degree of jargon that has to be used. If you can avoid jargon, do so. If you must use a full the way we use jargon when it comes to promoting services, we let's say we, we mentioned a site such as Queen Elizabeth Hospital. We'll say Queen Elizabeth University Hospital, brackets, QEUH. Then throughout we refer to it as QEUH. That's shorter. People recognise the term as it's in the post. If you if also we I try to fix on two sentences per paragraph and I aim for about 30 30 words a set, no more than 30 words a sentence and try to aim for about 30 words a paragraph. That sounds harder than it is. This is also a bit more technical, but I also, when I create social media content, I use the Hemingway app, which to put simply the Hemingway app, I'll share it with you briefly, is an, it's a web, it's a free web program, which if you copy and paste the content, it will count the amount of ad, adverbs, big hard words as or long sentences and it will give you a rate a lower rate is better and uh, we aim to for instance a rating of about five this is an example of a post this is just a general i hope a lower a, simply put a lower score is better because it, 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 it means it's easier for your audience to read as you can imagine we aim for a reading age of about 11 12. I could spend all day talking about Hemingway, so that's that's the quick, that's the that's the short explanation. Understand, we want to have a wee experiment, uh, and forgive me if this is uh, looking maybe think of an experience where you or your team have perhaps reacted quickly within your services, have identified a good news story, you've given great service, and I'm aware that the term service might not be what you use usually. It's just a term I'm used to using. NHS yeah, from social media and change and or change and ultimately change someone's life. If you get in you, to do this, you simply need, as I said, we always want a good picture of a good video as opposed to just text. It doesn't need to be professionally shot so long as it tells the story. Like it's got a subject, it's got it's got a good quote from someone or a good ex lived experience from someone. And just also make sure you're using the right social media channel. Because as I said, I do notice that a lot of our more technical stories about the more uh, parts of NHS GGC which aren't as well known don't tend to perform as well on Facebook and Instagram, but they perform quite well on Twitter. It's also what they are will retweet, share, etc. etc. So it's important that you identify the right social media channel. That's me again. If you want us to crack on. Uh, I hope this has been an informative presentation. Thank you, Paul. Thanks for your um, enlightening and informative presentation. I think we can all take something away from that today with all the top tips and especially the distinctions between the use of different channels. That's really helpful. 
Um, and I'm sure we can all certainly up our social media game to promote the uh, the amazing work that we do. Has anybody got any quick questions for Paul before we go into a comfort break? Oh, hi, hello, John. Hi, Paul. Thanks very much for that uh, presentation. It's very, very good. Um, Thank you. I. I'm very much a Luddite when it comes to any of this kind of stuff. I'll hold my hand up. Technology and me, not bedfellows at all, but keen to disseminate, you know, the findings of, of ongoing research and so on through things like Twitter and Facebook and all that. Is that something, um, this may sound like an obvious question, but is, is that something we can do through the GGC computing platform or is that something that has to be done on a personal platform? Sorry, can you just clarify, are you talking about uh, researching as in researching good content or or posting? Can you just repeat the question? Sorry, yeah, John. sorry, sorry. Um, it's sort of um, clinical research. So um, that I'll be doing under the under the umbrella of the of the NHS, so clinical audit and research and disseminating the findings of that to a, a wider, a wider AHP audience to kind of engage collaboration and that kind of stuff. So looking at pathways to do that, and I, I imagine social media would be a rather good one, um, but something I'm not very well versed in. Um, so again, if if one was doing that, is that permitted through the NHS computing yes, system, sir. or is that done on a personal level? We would, if you would, you'd, we'd be happy to share. If 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 it's something you believe would be would be would be you'd like to share on social media, you could you could message me and my social media team, and we'd be happy to share. Okay. We'd be happy to share on the NHS GDC social media. I said I would prefer to start. I think Twitter would overall be the best place to start with such with more technical, more more technical, more finding as possible LinkedIn as well. And also, yeah. it's be a possible if, if if it's something exceptional that the press team would be quite interested to hear from you as well. So I, I, I think I said Twitter. I think the reason I've identified Twitter is the uh, as I said, A who works in one department will retweet. B will comment, C will see this, D. It's a little more of a medical, from a professional viewpoint over Twitter than Facebook is. Okay. So yes, we'd be happy to, if, if it was something we believe would would would, would be appropriate, we, we'd be happy to share this across HSUGC social media. Okay. It maybe when I, when I get to that point, I might contact you guys directly, if that's okay, and get your advice on yes. how, to, how to push that onwards. Would that be all right? Yes. Thanks very much. Yes, Jay Shona. Hi, Paul. Thanks. Thanks again for a great presentation. I'm just thinking about John's question, just in terms of the personal page and whether you share things yourself, and is it good to have an account set up? And I suppose it was just to get your views on the benefits of having a personal account and being, well, I suppose, a personal professional account that you share your own information and how how much more engagement you get. Um, as a professional through doing it that way or doing it through yourselves? I think professional, I think I would recommend yes, you should, you should set a professional there, you could very much, set, you should set a professional account because there is some, sometimes we will instead, instead of let's say posting from ourselves, we will retweet something that is posted on because we started to cut back slightly in the amount of posts we make on social media because we did it appreciate because we had a lot of national campaigns and sometimes miss because we aim for about five posts a day or so on each channel but on twitter i found also historically the twitter audience are a little more receptive to repeated posts not repeat or, or multiple additional posts a day we can also they are also more receptive to retweets and also if we were to retweet let's say something you've said this would be picked up quite readily by our own audience so i think while we'd be happy to share content that's given to us, we may also recommend that if you were to post it on a per per professional personal channel, we would we would also we would retweet it. Yeah, because that might we would instead retweet it if we felt if we felt it was better if we if, if we felt it was more appropriate to do to to share this way. I hope that made sense. Thanks, Paul. Is there any other questions from anybody? Sarah? Hi, Paul. I was just going to continue on from that. So if we were to 
tweet something personally, would we then tag you in that tweet so if you could see that and then decide whether you wanted to retweet it? Is that how we would do that? Yes, you could yeah. do that. That's the way it would work. Uh, yeah, I'm quite, I tend to retweet fairly often, particularly, as I said, Twitter is the best place that we start with this because uh, of the more engaged audience in Twitter. So yes, if you if you, if you tag me in, uh, we can have a relook. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you for you. that. Thanks, Paul. Is there anything else before we go for a quick break? Les? Hi, Les. Les. <laughs> Not so much a question, Paul, but having retired 18 months ago, I recognise the power of social media. Um, and it's not just in healthcare. Um, I've got colleagues, for example, who are physically told uh, my next door neighbour's replacement, don't go on it. Don't use um, Facebook, don't use Twitter, because there's so much that can go wrong. It's like you were saying earlier, Paul, good stories, bad stories. You've got to think about the impact that these are going to have. And when I go back to my training days, whether we were talking about equality issues or clinical issues, it tends to be the more negative stuff that gets reported in the media generally. Mm. So I think, Paul, it's quite difficult to get that balance between making sure there is a mix of the kind of bad stuff, but... So it's just a word of caution, I think, about the power of social media. I, yeah, the way we do it is that we make sure that, let's say that example from borderline personality disorder, or if it's something that didn't go so well, we, in the future, we make it clear that we did work with those who live with, who live with the condition. And, uh, and we did respond because we removed, we had two additional posts, one of which was well-meaning. We were both well-meaning, one of which discussed had a, had a phone number to the Samaritans. It was well-meaning, but it perhaps felt, gave an impression we were shifting the onus mm. of care in a direction which really went against our aims. Mm. We weren't trying to do that. It was offering, but it, the politics of, that was, that was a particularly challenging situation. Uh, and I think, for instance, next week it's Youth Mental Health Day. So we have created some basic, some just basic, the way we've created content is we're telling people to, young people to tell a pal how they, ask a pal how they're feeling. Tell a pal how you're feeling. Because we feel as if they might, young people might be a bit more conscious that they weren't able to speak to their friends compared to how we also have to be conscious. And I've not finished this campaign yet because we have to be conscious that we don't give the impression of, moving onus away from ourselves because I hope that made sense what I said. Thank you. Thanks Paul. 